Today we're going to keep rolling with our Clipper series and we're going to talk about how to do a PID tune. What's up everyone, Chris here, and yes, we are going to continue on with our Clipper firmware series on our Ender 3 V2. Now the next logical step that I would take when setting up a new 3D printer would be to get a good set of PID values I can use in my configuration. Now this might seem like a simple thing to do because there is an auto calibrate process you can use to get these values, but not everyone is going to know how to do this, especially in something like Clipper firmware where it might be just a little bit different. So that's what we're going to walk through today. And some folks might not know what PID is. Basically all we're doing is trying to get a good set of gain values we can use for our heaters, for a hot end and our bed, that we can control the temperature consistently. You want it to ramp up at a certain arc and be able to maintain that temperature. If it fluctuates a lot, it might affect your print quality. So we definitely want to get a good set of values to use. So let's jump right into it. I'll show you how to get this done. We can get this out of the way and move on to something else. So here we are back in Mainsail. Mainsail actually makes this pretty nice to do the PID tune because you have a temperature graph. If your PID was out, you would be able to see it here. It'd be very inconsistent bouncing up and down. Remember, we use an example file to build the firmware for the Ender 3 V2. It already has some values in it that work pretty well, but it is worthwhile running through the process just so I can show you, or maybe my heater cartridge doesn't perform as well as the one that they use to run for this configuration. It's just a good idea to go ahead and run it. And it's pretty easy to do. Once you run it, you will save your values in your printer.cfg. So we'll head over there. In the extruder and the heated bed section, you're going to see your PID values. There are a couple different algorithms that are supported by Clipper for PID. Most of the time, we just go with PID. All of this, again, is in the Clipper reference. It gives a pretty good explanation about what PID actually is. But the other algorithm is watermark. We're just going to stick with the default PID for now. But you can see you have your three values. Proportional, integral, and derivative. There's really no need to worry yourself about what all of these are. Just know we configure all of them to work together to be able to balance that temperature out while we're 3D printing. And really all we have to do to calibrate these to get these numbers is run a PID underscore calibrate. And you can see we also have numbers down here for our bed. We'll calibrate that as well. So we can close this configuration file for now. And we'll head over to the console. And of course it can't be just as easy as that to enter PID calibrate. You do have to have some parameters to tell it what to do. But we'll do PID underscore calibrate. Then we need to tell it what heater we'd like to calibrate. So we'll do heater equals extruder, and then we need a target temperature. So target equals 210. Now some folks are going to tell you that you want your target temperature aimed at what filament you print the most, like PLA would be 210. Now I've printed a lot of different types of material. I always have the best luck tuning PID in the middle zone of where I'm going to print. So anywhere from 185 all the way up to 290. In all of those ranges, 210 has worked the best for me. Try it out. If you print a lot of ABS, you might want to go at a higher range, but I've had unpredictable results doing PID tunes at higher temps. So we're going to stick with 210. And we'll just send this command. And it's going to start the PID calibrate. And now you can see that it's starting to heat up the extruder. So it's going to bounce this from room temperature up to 210, monitor for overshoot, and come up with some values. It is also important to remember you want to be at room temperature before you start this calibrate, so it will be able to accurately tell how long, how much power it's going to provide to get it up to the temperature to keep it balanced. So make sure your heaters are off and it's been setting so it's at room temp before you start this. You can see on the first pass, as soon as it hit our target temp, it completely shut the heater off. It set a lower target temp. As soon as it's reached that, it goes to 100% again to turn the heater back on. 
and it's going to take a measurement to see how long it takes to get back to that 210. And it will repeat that process several times. And after about six passes, the tuning has been completed, and you'll have your parameters over here. And to save that in a config file, all you need to do is save underscore config. That'll save it to printer.cfg. It will also make a backup copy of that old file, and it'll restart the printer. Once that's done, I also like to do a PID tune for the bed. I'm just going to hop over to console because I think it's a little easier to see. But it's the same command, just different parameters. PID underscore calibrate. This time we'll do heater equals heater underscore bed. And our target temp equals 60. My usual PLA temperature. Again, I have the same type of results I do with the bed as I do the hot end. I like to use somewhere in the middle of the road where I would usually use the heated bed. And we'll send that command. Remember again, have the bed at room temperature before you start this, but it's going to go through the same process as we just did with the hot end and give us a set of values. And once again, when the PID calibrate is complete for your bed, you can enter save underscore config to write it to your CFG file. And now that we're done with both, let's head over and take a look at that configuration file real quick. You can see the values that we had in here before have been commented out both for the hot end and the bed. And the new values are down here at the bottom. These are the ones that are going to be honored going forward. Now you could take these out and just update them up above if you'd like, but it's going to be the exact same thing. There's no issues with maintaining them down here. But now you should be good to go with nice stable temperatures for your hot end and your heated bed. And there we go, our PID calibration is complete for both our hot end and our bed. We should have nice consistent temperatures when we do our 3D prints. Now, this was a short video, it's relatively straightforward to get this done. But again, it is just a little bit different in Clipper, so I thought it'd be worthwhile because this can really increase the consistency of your 3D print quality. So, hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.